Melrose uh, won the toss and they are going to defer to Burlington. Burlington will receive. Melrose to kick off. Welcome to Varsity Field, everyone, in Melrose High School. I'm Nick Bongiorno. Tonight, uh, and along with our cameraman Josh Coughlin, announcing for BCAS Sports as we got a good one tonight. The Bronze and Red Devils take on the Melrose Red Raiders. And um, this is a very one sided game tonight. Melrose coming in 6 0, Bronze are coming in 0 6. So obviously, Bronze is not favored at all in this game. But if they were to win, if they do some things right, you know, you never know. Sports are sports, and they might pull off an ultimate upset. But to do that, um, we might go over a couple key things. Not knowing as much about Melrose, I definitely know that they're playing very high standard this year, scoring so many points, defending well. Burlington's going to need to come out guns blazing and um, do well in the kicking game, defensive end, stopping the run, stopping the pass. And obviously the big story is Kyle Pena. He's been a good quarterback. He's been evolving well for Burlington. Unfortunately, uh, it's not been resulting in the wins as Burlington's defense really needs to step up the game and the special team's unit mistakes. As we've seen, uh, Burlington last week got two punts blocked for touchdowns, and that obviously cost them the game and all with a 17-point loss. Burlington trying to get their first win tonight as we're going to have the kickoff. Burlington's going to receive first with Jake Dorherty and Ryan O'Hallen back deep. Number uh, 66, Boyne Kimar kicks the ball off and it goes to Ryan O'Halloran. Good blocking seems like, and Ryan O'Halloran with the speed gets around and he's taken down about the 29 yard line as Burlington's offense gets onto the field. Kyle Pena, his uh, first year as a starter, um, he's a sophomore, backed up obviously uh, the great Dylan Bonfilly for the last three years. He's gonna need to, he has some big roles to fill as I said before. He's been doing better each week and connecting especially with his wide receiver, Ryan O'Halloran, who uh, by the way took it on the first play. And Bronson's gonna need to come out and not just get um, three and outs, they're gonna need to actually come out and um, control the line of scrimmage. As here we see, I believe we got Jake Doherty and Kyle Pena. Ready to take the snap, two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Kyle Pena takes the snap. He throws a quick one, and a nice little connection right there to his uh, receiver. Number 17, Michael Pavo. He's been doing some great catches this year, and he gets Burlington uh, first down right off the bat, so a good way to start the game. Obviously, that was just like a little, the, caught it and didn't have, one of the biggest things for him, Kyle Pena has been the evolution of getting the ball of his hands quicker, not pulling onto the ball, even though if he sometimes does need to, this offensive line gave up a lot of sacks last game. He takes the read option like he did so many times last week, and he gets about um, a couple yards before being stuffed. Kyle Pena, I want to see how many times they run the read option or run the quarterback sneak. Kyle Pena got a lot of hits last week. I'm surprised didn't you keep putting your quarterback in that position to get the hits. He might uh, just cost him. But nevertheless, he uh, gets the ball and does pretty good. For the first two plays, um, they played zone as in the defense, and they're going to play uh, zone again with coverage to the out very far outside. Number seven, Jake McCauley. And we got Ryan O'Halloran as always. Jake Doherty to uh, Calpena's right. And he takes the snap. Hands it off. Oh, Jake Doherty is stuffed. Not a great running play right there by Jake Doherty as Kyle Pena didn't have the greatest opportunity. All right, a big third down here for Burlington. They've been good at converting these. And as I said, I sorry I didn't get to say as much. The offensive line was the biggest problem last week, allowing five sacks of the quarterback, getting hit like about 20 times. Burlington's going to need to protect Kyle Pena and really protect him from being injured or getting so many hits. Third down here. Two receivers to the, three receivers to the right, one to receiver to the left. Kyle Pena takes a snap. He's got some good protection. He throws it out, nice, oh, he had him open. Number four, Ryan Colhane, and a flag is down. A flag is down. It might be on the defense. It could give him a first down if it was. That was very, very good setup play by Bronson. Ryan, Col and Ryan Colhane uh, didn't do the greatest job with his hands, but at the same time, Kyle Pena could have made a better, um, better throw, and we'll see what the flag is. And the flag is indicated on. We'll see who it's on. It's hard. They're going to move the chain. So the flag is on Melrose. Melrose is not happy about it. They don't understand what the call was. 
They're screaming it was offensive, but uh, the referees are saying that the chain gang at least moved it up. We're going we're gonna to have a conference between the referees. This would be a first down, as they've indicated already, unless they change the call. And the ball, they're going to be moving the chains back. And they might bring up fourth down here if they call it offense. The chain gang's moved back, so a lot of confusion here. Wondering what happened there? The well, chain gang moved it up. They thought originally it was on the uh, defense. And that's a killer right there. You don't know what the penalty flag was for. But Ryan Colhane, nonetheless, on the play, should have had the catch. And in my opinion, could have thrown a little bit of a nicer ball. Good protection, though, from the offensive line to buy Pena sometime. Last week, Wilmington's pass rush with the big guys up front really pass destroyed. Burlington and they're going to decline the penalty as we thought. So we'll bring up a fourth down and six that Burlington at midfield and wants to set the tone early. He's going to go for it. So this is a big play right here. Will uh, Melrose going out? Look like they're that play is right into the hands. What was that? Oh my goodness gracious! The disaster continues in the punt game for Burlington as they try to fake. This is a Tom Brady move right there. Kyle Pena took the snap, and Melrose was expecting them to, to make them to pass it, but he kicked it, and the biggest shank I've ever seen kicked it like about two yards, and that's on that's going to be on bloopers. So many bad punting plays, and that comes from for Pena. What a joke! So number twelve, who um, the quarterback. Uh, I believe uh, Melrose, Stanton, Charlie, uh, Charlie Stanton, excuse me, um, took the snap and handed off. And <laughs> this is bad field position for Bronson. and they, that was not what they wanted. They had a chance for Caleb Elock to just punt the ball. They try to fake, and he shanked it. It's not good at all. And Bronson's now set up in a difficult position with a good offense. Charlie Stanton hands it off to his um, running back, number four, Isaac Seed. And Seed is taken down close to a first down, about third and one or third and two. And coming up for Melrose, and a big chance right here for Brown to try and stop the stop the momentum. Is there the fact that they, they might have just made one of the biggest mistakes of their season? And not there's been a lot, and when you go on six, there's a lot of mistakes, and it's reasonable under a new head coach and a new system. Either way, Charlie Stan takes his first snap, and he's going to hand it off again to um, Lewis Seed, who's going to burst by. Great cut. First down and goal. It only took two plays, but Burlington is now down and almost on the verge of giving up six points early. A good little play right there, and we see um, Lewis, excuse me, Isaac Speed, Isaac Seed, sorry, his name a little bit. It's just elusive moves. Charlie Stan, like he's been set up this whole time. See if they're going to run again. They're going to trust the running game. And that's going to be an easy touchdown for Isaac Seed to give the Melrose Red Raiders an early lead only about past three minutes into the game. Hard running there by Seed. And Charlie Stan didn't have to do shotgun once. Bronson could not stop the run. They clearly watched the film. Melrose did. They're a great team. And they exposed Bronson's weakness and us. ability to stop the uh, now we're going to see the kicker come on to try and attempt the extra point in this beautiful night here in Melrose. He takes the snap, and Brolin trying to block it, but no chance. What a great kick. And the net has blocked it. And that is Mike Calvert with the great kick up through the uprights. Luckily, he looked like he's a big leg right there. It didn't go into the parking lot and, and hit a car. Ronan now 7-0, and it's going to be tough to climb back from this. Not the start they wanted at all, considering the fact that we're not supposed to, Brown's not expected to win the game, but when you're not expected to win the game, you don't want to get off to a slow start, because that, that really can destroy the momentum of the game. And now you're giving a Melrose a chance. Really did not go do a, any favors by taking that uh, that punt, fake punt, excuse me, by, by, by the quarterback. That puts him in uh, danger of maybe getting a hit, and it did not work out at all. 
One of the biggest bloopers of the season. Number 66, Kimar Broin is going to kick this. The big guy about to take the second kickoff of the game, back deeper, Jake Doherty and uh, Ryan O'Halloran. Get a great kick the first time. He makes sure his receivers are ready. He kicks it and a little bit of a push kick to uh, bounces. Ryan O'Halloran is going to try a second time, and uh, unless he has some really good moves, which he's not going to get through that. If blocking was not there, a good kick. And Burlington is going to be set up at the 28 about for the second straight time. See if they can do something better this time and not get stalled. They really had a chance in the last drive, but they end up giving up the big play. So Kyle Pena gets his second try of the night. Kyle Pena under center again. He's got his receivers out to his right, two to his left. Four offensive linemen. And he's got running back to his right. Playing zone defense, looking like as if they're going to bring a blitz. Melrose, oh, and the snap is terrible! And he luckily recovers it. And another disaster for Kyle Pena, snap-wise, and almost ended up in another first down at the, like, the 20-yard line for Wilma, uh, excuse me, Melrose. Not going good at all. The snapping game has been terrible this season for Burlington, and it's not showing any good right there as the first play. It's a loss of 10. The is going to have to gain 20 yards to get the first down. Very difficult. One deep safety by Melrose, and he's good snap this time. Pressure, and a whip. Oh, what a great pass! Good! Number four! Burlington's off to the races, and a tackle at the 15. What a great connection to Ryan Colhane off his fresh off his injury, his second game. He played, he made some big plays against Wilmington. And that was a beauty of a pass and a catch. And a little bit of extra yardage at the end. Burlington, just what they needed to get out of the second and 20. Mel was not expecting it. Burlington set up in a big situation here and needing to get points. And Kyle Pena quickly switches from his 20 to the other team's 20 with a chance to score. Great play and great connection right there as we've seen all year. Kyle Pena improving his connection with the receivers to let go of the ball early enough, hit the player in stride, and we'll see what he has right here in the red zone. Cody Davidson to his left. One receiver to the right, three to the uh, left. And here comes Davidson, and he gains no yardage. Number 36, Cody Davidson around the right side, tackled by number 32, Solomon Cannon. Yeah, it was, they tried to run maybe a little bit of a read option, try and see whether they um, would go right or look at Pena. And they clearly studied, Melrose did, that Pena really likes, has a tendency to keep them. So Pena actually did a smart thing and handed off to Davidson, but unfortunately for Davidson, only gains a yard. Now they have a different formation two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. One receiver in motion. Pena takes this tap. He takes it. Went to the end zone. Oh, and just overthrown. He had his man. Tight coverage. Good play by Melrose to not really let go and let um to let go of I believe Michael Pavo on the play. And it's going to be a third and nine, a big third and nine. Another chance for Burlington. The Chile squad is uh, cheering on Burlington. Not a lot of fans tonight. Uh, nice cool night though. Great night for uh, Flair Friday, as always, even though it hasn't been the greatest season for us. Always great to come out to these games as we're hoping for the first W of the year. Paolo Pena, he's gonna run himself. And that was not a smart play call. I'm not going to agree with that play call at all. What was that? It was third and nine. A loss of a yard. And I don't know if they're trying to catch Melrose napping, but that just was a disaster of a play. He had, he should, when you're third and nine, you have to throw the ball. And he just takes it himself. And another chance of him getting injured by getting hit. Not a smart play. It's a loss of a yard. Burlington needs it. Fourth and ten. You can't just give up, you got down in this position, you want to keep on going. The stalls have drive too much this year, and this is another chance for them to try and prove that they can finish off the drives. Pena under center again. Bringing blitz. Pena, nice little out route. Is it going to be good enough for the first down? It's right at the chains. They might give it to him. They're going to say, depends on the spot. 
I believe the referee is pointing is pointing that it was a first down for no first down. They're gonna say he was short. I believe. I'm still a little bit confused on the call. We don't see uh, the can't differentiate right now between the offense and the defense. And it they considered him short. He's short, and that's another disaster for Burlington getting down so close. And nice little try on the blitz. They brought the blitz, Melrose did. So Pena, nice little play to get out of his hands quickly, avoid the hit, but it was short. Burlington now has a chance to convert a field position, though, to stop Melrose's offense, so they couldn't stop the run on the first drive. Charlie Stanton. Charlie Stanton. They're going to run again. And a hit, and he almost gets hit off, but that was unbelievable play. Isaac Seed trying to go again. They have not given the ball to Stanton once. They're trying to see how much they can shove the ball down Burlington's throat. So we're asking maybe Troy uh, Stanton is going to actually take a snap for once and go and throw the ball, or is he just going to keep running it? Troy Stanton is going to throw the ball for once. It's going to be a little bit of screen. Nice blocking. And the play would be good. Is it going to be good enough? They're going to call this a third down. A good little screen play and uh, first pass of the night from Charlie Stanton. Out right to the side, a little bit of good blocking, but Brown didn't able to stop it. A big third and two coming up, trying to get um, Melrose's offense off the field. I suspect a run play here, considering how good Melrose has been in it. So Charlie Stanton again. This formation, absolutely. And they're going to do that again. And to the side, and it's not going to be even closer, Brownton. Oh, what moves! Unbelievable moves by number four, Isaac C. again, the main running back. A flag is down. It might be against Melrose for offensive holding, but we'll see. Unbelievable. It looked like it came in the area farther down the field, so it might be a spot foul and the, give them a first down, but 15 yards back. And they're calling it legal hands to the face. Legal hands to the face on Melrose, and that's unnecessary penalty. It's going to bring up a third and um, I believe 10 yards, or might be 12. That was a good running design though. Um, again, obviously Charlie Stan handing off to his uh, trusted running back as a seed. And almost gaining uh, what they thought. Well, they did gain what they thought at first down before the penalty wiped it out. So we'll see what Burlington can do here. Charlie Stan in the huddle and they break the huddle. And the, the spot foul is going to be a third and one. It's going to result in almost the same exact play. Only have one receiver out, so you suspect this is going to be a full up power run. And it's a quarterback sneak. And it's a great quarterback sneak for the first down. So hard to stop this Melrose um, run game. So many good blockers and big guys up there against Bronson, who really have not been doing good this year stopping the run. First down and 10 for the Melrose Red Raiders. Charlie Stanton takes the snap and he hands it off to number 32, who is wrapped up. Colin Kiernan tried to break through at Burlington, understanding once that this is a run play, read it well, and stopped it for almost no gain. I wonder how many players don't get tired out there. I mean, we haven't talked about it, but these players play both offense and defense mostly in high school football. And they say are able to not get tired out. Bronze looks like they're blinking the blitz. Charlie Stanton all day, and his throw is very nice. Not for Burlington. He did a good enough throw. He could have, this receiver could have caught it. Unfortunately, good coverage and um, no catch, which is perfect by Burlington. Defend the play well and bring up a third down in, uh, I believe, eight. Great blitz right there, not allowing him out of the pocket, pressuring him and making him throw it to a place that his receiver really couldn't get it. So a third and nine. Big play for Burlington, trying to get out the field once again. Charlie Stan, obviously going to take the shotgun. Bring the pressure. And, oh, Burlington did not read it well. And it might be a big gain. Number 32, Kiernan stays on his feet. Fighting, fighting before pushed out by number seven, Jake McCauley. Burlington bringing pressure, but unfortunately not good enough. And Burlington gives up a huge play to move the chains and knock it off the field again. This is why Melrose is so good. They can determine what you're going to do. They have good read options. So many veteran players. 
and they have their coach from uh, from years before, so it's not a new system. Now they're going to hand it to the running back, Lewis Seed. Makes another move, just as he's been making all night. He keeps on running all the way down to the 29. This man's a machine. Isaiah Seed. Isaac Seed, I believe one of the heaviest besides the offensive line on the team, so definitely has the power to, and also elusiveness, just mu pure muscle. And this is one of the play, main plays we've seen. One running back to his right and one to his left, and he hands it off. No, he's going to read option it. And Charlie Stan, just running the ball constantly, gets the ball for five yards to the 25 of Burlington. And Melrose pushing for another um, quick score. Brown has cheerleaders encouraging Brown to try and play some defense. They're bringing four. Middle's a little bit open, and I was surprised about that. Lewis Sleed, and he is stuffed. Third down. You need to stop them on third down to have a chance. And he has to have a chance by giving off the third downs. Charlie Stanton obviously can try and do another screen pass. Not really taking too many shots deep. Not any, not really too exciting of an offense here. They just uh, run the ball because they know they can. And they also screen pass it. They always have two running backs behind them. One to his right, one to his left. This is so key. Maybe for blocking, two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Charlie Stanton in shotgun. Bronson bringing the pressure. He hands off the seed as we said before. And Bronson is not going to stop them. He might be a little bit short, but they're going to move the chains. Number four. Referee signaled that he had enough for the first, and Burlington just not doing anything right right now. They could not stop the run or the pass. But obviously, you would think that Burlington would uh, be able to stop them in a third and six on a run, but Burlington's not able to, and they're just running the ball really down Burlington's throats. Lewis Seed, and he is tackled by number seven, Jake McCauley. Forty-four seconds to go in this exciting first quarter. Brown did one big play. Other than that, a couple of disastrous plays, and Melrose offense doing really well in the run game. Unfortunately for them. And it's sort of not for them, obviously, so they were doing great, but for the fans, not the most exciting offense, just running the ball all the time, not taking any shots. Now two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left, only one running back this time. Charlie Stan takes a snap. He passes, and the ball is almost intercepted. Back covering is number four. Uh, I believe that is Ryan Colleen, great um, receiver as well, just like Ryan O'Halloran. and the two Ryans doing great this season. And um, they broke up the play there. Burlington is able to get another third down, but if you don't stop them on third down, it's going to go all the way to the end zone. So Burlington needs to stop, and they cannot just allow them to run the ball. Can't allow a run for a first down on third and eight. Can't see that again. Charlie Stan, oh, bringing the pressure. And blocking is beautiful. And the blocking is going to be, we can all see, it's going to be good for another First down. Burlington just not able to stop anything in the screen game and in the run game. And Melrose, very unexciting offense, just running screen plays. It's, um, maybe gonna run well, out. Oh, excuse me, no timeouts. It's the end of the first quarter. A good first quarter. Final score: seven nothing. Melrose on the turnover by Burlington on the fake punt by. Um, excuse me. Big pump by Kyle Penny, excuse me, excuse me. And um, that was kind of the most disastrous play of the first half of Bruins, and obviously not doing good in the defense at all. That needs to change. Obviously not a lot of time to talk about this for the transition between the first and second quarter. So I think that what they should do is try and get this to the second half and then really have a full team talk with their coach Dan McKay and adjustments. And what they need to do to stop this running game and then uh, finish drives off and finish and just execute better offensively. So that they have a chance in the second half. Right now, I think you want to try and get out of this jam that you're in. 
one escape with only maybe like a two touchdown deficit like they've been able to come overcome. Or just a one touchdown deficit, they were able to stop him here. But it's a first and goal, and it's going to be really hard, Josh, uh, to stop him five yards out. Josh Goffin, obviously, tonight our cameraman. I'm Nick Bongiorno, your um, only commentator, play-by-play -play and color. A little bit tiring, but you know what? Friday Night Lights. Always nice to come out and uh, do these games. So we have the, um, the Melrose Red Raiders dominating the game early. See if that can change in the second quarter at all. Charlie Stanton trying to bring them on, the troops on. Definitely have four shots into the end zone here, assuming their uh, great running game and how they want to go for that. I assume it would be probably like three runs and one pass play, maybe on a play action if they were to, if they even need that. They might just go straight in for the touchdown run. So Charlie Stanton under center. I formation. Full up power right here. It hands it off to Seed. Seed easily in for a second touchdown. 13-0 Melrose Red Raiders. Not even close, Bruins, into catching C Isaac Seed. And it's an early 14-0. Mike Calvert for a second extra point of the night. Takes it, and his kick is no good. So he's one for two tonight on the extra points, but for nonetheless, 13-point lead for the Melrose Red Raiders. As Burlington's offense is really going to need to step it up. They they've shown the ability all year to connect and do well. Now they're going to have to finish all the drives in the end zone to give themselves a chance. Because they not if they do not score, they keep stalling even if they get far enough. That's a disaster, and Ron needs to start running to score points in the red zone. We'll see what Kyle Pena can do. Only five seconds into the second half, uh, excuse, excuse, second quarter, excuse me. And the first play was a touchdown by uh, Seed, the second of the game. So the third time the Browns is going to receive tonight, number 66, Kemar Van Roo is going to kick the ball. Steps up. The Red Raiders ready to charge. Rowan is trying to block for the first time all night. He's got a big kick. Trying to do for the third straight time. He pooched it last time. Let's see if he does it again. He does pooch it. A nice kick. And Rowan is going to let it bounce and start blocking. Ryan O'Hallen trying to make a move. He breaks through to the 30-yard line for the third straight time. That is about the same. The average starting field position for Rowan. Trying to get something going. They got one big play all night. And unfortunately, the drive has been stalling. He's going to have to stop, and Bruins going to have to start getting some offense. The pass protection has definitely been better than last week against Wilmington. But nonetheless, the connections by the receivers and the run game is going to have to be better. So 10.48 to go in the second quarter, just starting, as Kyle Pena's offense takes the field for the third time. We have Dylan McKillen to take the snap. Excuse me, to, uh, to snap the ball. Four, four total receivers, three to the right, one to the left. And Pena is going to take the snap, and he's going to go straight up run. He makes a move and gets tackled by the Direction. legs. Direction. Oh, excuse me, that was Ryan O'Halloran. and they ran the Wildcat formation. And um, good tackle right there to bring him down by the ankles. Uh, Kyle Pena, let's see where you. I do not believe Pena's in the game. Right now they're running the second straight Wildcat. You wonder if Pena's in this game. That's another handoff and a gain of about four with an extra push. Kyle Pena is not in this game. I don't know if he might be injured, might be benched. He looks like he might be bending over on the sideline. And right now, Ryan O'Halloran, the sophomore, is uh, playing quarterback. He might be the backup. Look at this formation. Four receivers to the right and one to the left. And we're going to see they're playing zone, might be bringing some pressure. 
see how Burlington goes about this. We do not know really what happened to Kyle Pena. Meanwhile, Ryan O'Halloran is taking the calls and see if, what he can do for the first time all season with the pass. He takes the snap, he runs, oh, bringing pressure, and he is sacked. No, obviously when you don't, when you're used to being a receiver, you don't really expect to be thrown into the game as a quarterback too much. And I don't know, but Kyle Pena is not in this game. As Cam Wheelock is out to punt for the first time tonight. You see if the snap is good. Like last week we got two blocked punts for touchdowns and that was disastrous. So we'll see what Cam Wheelock can do. That was a strange sequence. We did not see um, Kyle Penny. He might be injured as Rhino Howard was not able to do too much in his first series. A uh, decent punt and a high kick. Not, not the greatest kick as the ball is going to take a favorable bounce and the Bronze is going to down. Melrose. 8.26 to go, 13-0 Red Raiders here at uh, Melrose, Friday Night Lights. I'm Nick Mongiorno from BCAD along with our good cameraman Josh Coughlin. Having a good time so far. Not too many exciting events happening in the game, but usually they do pick up and Burlington, hopefully, hopefully um, unless, obviously they're not going to do too much, they're already putting in a different quarterback. Number 8. Um, Melrose is Jack Solomon. He's taking snaps and he's running. They took out Charlie Stanton. The only 13 point lead and they took out the main quarterback and put in number eight, Jack Sullivan. So we'll see what he does all game. They're running the same general formation each time and they're being pretty successful with the run, especially on third down. Number eight, Jack Sullivan. Takes it, and he hands it off to who, uh, Isaiah Seed. Why wouldn't you hand it off to that man? He's been so good all night, trucking, and still going. Down to the 44-yard line of Burlington, and that is a first down. Just destroying them, Isaiah Seed is in the running game. Burlington is surprised they haven't been as good as stopping the run this season. They have a lot of big guys up there by the likes of um, Cody Davidson, the running back, who's very powerful, Dylan McKillen, and Johnson Magata. Jack Sullivan trying to do a hard cadence. Takes it to Isaiah C. And again, Burlington not stopping him at all tonight, and he gets another first down. Or maybe a second and short, but probably going to move the chains. Why not keep feeding him? Isaiah Seed, the man of the match so far. Already running for many yards and two touchdowns. We're trying to go for another one. Meanwhile, the quarterbacks, they have four quarterbacks, Melrose do. You've seen Charlie Stan for the first two drives, and now we have Jack Sullivan out there. They're conversing and seeing what, what's going to happen. And they're measuring, and that should be enough for the first. And it is enough for the first. The chain gang does their job. Melrose sets up with another easy first down. Jack Sullivan comes back onto the field. And they're going to give Isaiah Seed a break. He's gotten a lot of running. Meanwhile, Burlington up front. Ryan O'Halloran trying to defend along with Jake McCauley. Now takes the snap. And that is a beauty. Another disastrous running play in the terms of defense. Oh, he fumbled the ball! And it's recovered by Burlington. It's recovered by Burlington. It might just be the spark they needed. Unbelievable play. Burlington looked like they were going to get shocked for a 21 nothing or 20 down nothing deficit based upon the way that he was running. And all the runs. You're bound to fumble, and Melrose learns their lesson. They fumble the ball, and Bronin's offense gets another chance. Running the ball down their throats all night, and they finally fumbled it. That break Bronin might have just needed to, with 6.56 to go, not get down by three scores, maybe even turn something into this, and maybe get some momentum into the second half with the score. Let's we'll see what they can do. Okay. 
it's either it's Kyle Pena or if it's um Ryan O'Halloran again. And it's, I believe, oh, this is not Kyle Pena, it's Ryan O'Halloran again. He's coming off defense. Kyle O'Halloran, and he's just taking a snap himself. Good blocking there. Makes a move. Nice move by O'Halloran. He's taken down and he gets the first. A nice little running play there and some elusive moves by the mighty O'Halloran to get the first down. Ryan O'Halloran on the right Ryan O'Halloran just getting that big first down from Burlington. Cody Davidson on his uh, right. Two seats to the right, two seats to the left. He takes it again, and he's going to hand it off to Davidson on the read option. And that is a truck! Davidson <laughs> made an absolutely pounding run. Only getting three yards, but a nice hit. And he was not going to go down easily, as he hasn't been all season. Brings up a second and seven. Meanwhile, uh, Melrose seems to be clogging up the middle. They've been playing zone tonight. We'll see how they do. Uh, Brown in with five, four offense, five offensive linemen, excuse me. One receiver to the right. Pena, excuse me, Howland takes the snap again. And he tries to make a move, but that's just not going to go anywhere. And he's going to be a uh, third down and eight ish about. Number 21, Ryan O'Halloran on the left side. Tackled by number 17, Big third down and eight here. Brondon might need to trust O'Halloran. He has good genes. He's got two good brothers to see what he can do as a quarterback. Hasn't really thrown the ball tonight. On third down, it might be crucial for him to throw it. And they're lining up with the same formation that they did on the last third down he had in the previous drive. Four receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. 5-0 line. Ryan O'Halloran takes the snap and it's gonna be a straight run. Blocking, first down. And they're gonna call a penalty and I believe this is gonna be coming back. I'm not trusting him to throw the ball. Maybe Kyle Pena's injured and, and it's gonna be on a Burlington for offensive holding. So, third and 18, and I don't think you're gonna be running for this, so maybe trust Ryan O'Halloran, and maybe just give him a chance with his arm to do something and not just go straight run. Be very disappointing if he did. Ryan O'Halloran takes it, and he's gonna run out. He whips the ball downfield, and intercept, oh! Number 23 who is um, Gabriel Nyland, had it in his grasp for the interception. And maybe it isn't the greatest idea to throw the ball with Ryo Howe, the second back of quarterback, as he almost threw a pick. But dropped, and Braun is going to have to punt the ball for the second time with Cam Wheelock with 421. And Red Raiders, with the, obviously the great running game and great return game, everything they have, that's why they're 6-0, are going to get a chance to extend the lead. Cam Wheelock, looking for a good snap for once in his lifetime this season. His snap, not great, but he gets it off. His kick, air resistance as physics would say. And it's a good enough punt to get to the 40, but as we know, air resistance came up big right there and stopped it. Credits to uh, Missile Air of the Breach. Just... Charlie Stanton now back in there just they're running, they're just playing around with our defense at this point, trying to see what happens. Just throwing in different quarterbacks, different formations, but the run game has always been uh, the constant. 
So Ronan trying to play a little bit better defense. They got a fumble last time. Charlie Stanton takes it and they're going to keep running it and Burlington stops the run for the once. Number 32, who is Colin Kiernan, the captain, and the senior at 5 foot 9 and 175 pounds, takes it up and unable to run through the Burlington defensive line. As we said before, who's not been as good this season as they would hope with the big man they have up front. Second and nine, Charlie Stanton, probably going to run, and he runs himself, and that is a play that's good enough to get the four yards about for a third and five. As we said before last week, uh, we talked about Wilmington. Nick Campbell came on and did great, and Sean McGilvery, um, those two did good, calling off the middle. Not doing the best tonight in that with against his offensive line, but and they're going to have their man, Isaac Seed, who makes another move for a first down and more. Isaac Seed all the way down to the 20-yard line and a first down. Just dominant running game from Melrose right now, bleeding the clock down to 248. Charlie Stan going to probably run the ball again. Bronden having a troubled time getting their position ready, and that just shows right there. That's going to be a touchdown. His third of the game, Isaac Seed. Making up a lot of points and a 19-0 huge lead for the Melrose Red Raiders at home. And almost a very, very difficult situation now for Bronson, as it wasn't going to be even from the start of the night. Just completely thrown in shambles on the, on the defensive line, the front seven, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go. And it showed right there as Brondon's going to be almost down 20 nothing unless he makes this kick. 27, Calvert, Mike Calvert, and his kick this time is good. You wonder, I wonder what happened to Kyle Pay. You don't know what happened to him, and no, obviously injury reports in high school football, but. Right now he's been there, only taking really one. He's been taking snaps and running them up himself as quarterback keepers, so the Melrose defense knows what to expect. And he, every time he tries to throw the, that ball down deep, it um, not doing so well. Obviously, that's what you have. You don't have that cohesion when you're, when obviously when you're a wide receiver and you have to switch the quarterback completely opposite. You don't have the same cohesion with the players as you would with the other quarterback. So obviously, very difficult situation tonight for Burlington, playing with a backup quarterback on the road against the best team, well, one of the best teams in the state. It's a very difficult task. Again, number 66, um, Kamar Bruin, ready to kick off for the fourth time tonight. Bruin kicks the ball and another good kick. Deep is Doherty, and Doherty makes a move, but he is tackled at the 25 as he got decked. Number 27, Dick Doherty on the return. Number 42, Dick Lewis on the stop, and Sir at the 25. Melrose defense on again. After a fairly easy walk into the end zone for his third touchdown, the dominant player of the night, Isaiah Seed, Ronton with Ryan O'Halloran out again, is gonna try and make something up with a back QB on against one of the best teams. So very difficult, but we'll see what he can do. Two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left, and he's got Jake Doherty behind him. Ryan O'Hallon takes the snap. He passes off to Jake Doherty. Jake Doherty, nice little run. And he gets about a good six, seven yards on the play for a second down and three. We're approaching the two minutes left in the um, second quarter, We're almost down to halftime. Brown and trying to get some sort of points on the board or some sort of spark going into halftime. Just trying to change some momentum, even though it's very unlikely, not very likely 
based on the situations they are going through, very difficult. But you have to believe and you have to hope that they can get this. All right, Ryan O'Halloran passes off to Davidson, and he is not going. Excuse me, not Davidson. That is Doherty. Jay Doherty not going anywhere with that as he gets decked immediately. 148 to go in the first half as Bruin is not having a very good half. And they need to change something and go into the second half and hopefully get some points here with um, the young sophomore, usually wide receiver. He's been playing um, Ryan O'Halloran, who plays also defense, so he must be very tired. It's a very hard situation. As we said so many times tonight, Ryan O'Halloran, not anyone in the backfield unless he takes it off himself. He's got blockers, but he might throw this ball. Melrose obviously not playing man. They're trusting their zone to get it done. So Ryan O'Halloran takes it under center. And as we said before, he's got the blockers and he's gonna pass it and goes through the hands of, I believe he was targeting, who was the, um, number seven? Unknown for the moment. He's trying to target Michael Pablo. Excuse me, Jake, Jake McCauley, excuse me. Hard to see the numbers from far away, but he's targeting Jake McCauley, went through his hands and that's a big drop. Fourth and four, and Burlington's not even gonna take a chance of trying to get a fourth down. They're gonna try and punt the ball. And uh, I would not really, uh, based upon the running game, I don't think that 20 yards deeper down the field is gonna make a difference in giving no yourself no chance. Burlington gonna kick the ball. Cam Wheelock, a nice little kick in the air. Bounced, takes a Burlington bounce. Gonna let it keep on rolling, 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 taking time off the clock. All the way down before being touched. So we're only about one minute 25 to go left in this uh, first half. We're all Melrose so far. It's 20 to nothing to score here at um, Melrose High School. As Burlington trying to just stop them. Anything would be nice. A turnover maybe, just a momentum boost, or just trying to stop them. They have not stopped the run at all tonight as Charlie Stan comes out for another uh, drive that he hopes will be fairly quick. He really hasn't been able to, uh, he hasn't done anything tonight as the play calling has been all run. Charlie Stanton. Stanton takes the ball. He's going to actually throw the ball for once. And his throw is, oh! Oh, Howland looked the wrong way. He had to let him go. And he was going to break free if, he, if Charlie Stanton had just made a better throw on the money in stride. It would have been another touchdown. So almost a disastrous play for Burlington as Charlie Stanton really makes his biggest throw so far of the night. One minute 12 to go. Charlie Stanton hands off to Isaiah Seed again, the man in the myth. Isaiah Seed taken down, but not before he gains a good six yards. It's going to bring up less than a minute to go in this first half and a third down for Melrose, who Bruin have not been able to stop at all tonight. Not stop Melrose on third down once. Mostly due to this dominant running game. Charlie Stanton again ties a seed. Trusting he gets the yards, and he is wrapped up. Fourth down, and Burlington is not going to take a timeout, I believe, as they're going to let the clock run down and regroup into halftime. A exciting first half. Brawl Melrose, unfortunately, for um, us BCAT um, fellows. Uh, we're going to see if they're going to run another play or just going to let the clock run down. And the clock's going to run down to halftime. A very um, disastrous first half of Rowan to not get any points, being outscored 20 to nothing. And once again, I'm Nick Bowen along with my cameraman Josh Coughlin, and we are BCAT Sports. In a good game so far, Rowan is down 20 to nothing. Um, as they were the underdogs coming in, they have a whole half Welcome left. We have a lot of, um, of the cool storylines of the first half. So Kyle Pena, the main quarterback for Burlington, left the game and is on the sideline but not playing as it seemed as if, as if he might have got injured and Ryan O'Hallon took over the rest of the game. 
for the rest of the first half. See what comes out for the second as um, as Bronton is going to try and stop Isaiah Seed, and Isaiah Seed brings it to the 45. Seed on the return to the Noah's 42 yard line. So as we saw in the first half, a lot of the run game was the disastrous part for Bronton's defense, and they couldn't stop the run at all. Isaiah Seed ran for definitely over about 200 yards and tons of first downs. No third down conversion stops for Bronton on defense. And uh, Kyle Pena lost a quarterback, I believe, to an injury. Um, as we see, um, I believe it's going to be Jack Sullivan for the game, the rest of the game probably. Uh, second half, up 20 nothing. Jack Sullivan takes it, and he hands it off to Isaiah Seed. Just breaking tackles like a madman. Isaiah Seed. Could it be four? It is four. It's a 26 nothing game. Isaiah Seed, his fourth touchdown of the night. And Bronton off to a disastrous first half. Second half, excuse me. That's what we talked about. They need to come out and stop the run, and that is not what they did. First play, and Seed coming up big. Breaking tackles, bursting through. Unbelievable. This is why he's one of the best running backs in high school. And the kick after is good by number 27, Mike Calvert. Bronton, only 22 seconds into the second half, is down by uh, another score, so pretty bad so far. So Josh, we, uh, Brent, can I go with my cameraman here? We saw Bronton's offense not be very productive. Kyle Pena unfortunately got injured. What do you think Bronton's offense is going to need to do to um, score some points here? Well, quite honestly, Nick, I'm very unqualified to answer this question as I do not know anything about sports. And in uh, Joe Vish's absence today, uh, you've been doing a very good job of uh, covering him, uh, covering the game. So uh, you'd be better off answering that than me. I am just the cameraman who aims the camera around. So. Very good answer. Thank you. No problem. As we get set for <laughs> the kickoff by the big man, number 66, Kamara Bruin. He kicks it the same way he's kicked it all night, and it's a bounce. And the bounce towards Ryan O'Halloran. O'Halloran takes it down to the 30. Ryan O'Halloran on the return. Is see Kyle Pena coming back, or is it going to be Ryan O'Halloran? It seemed like I saw in pregame, Josh, that Ryan O'Halloran was uh, warming up, and Kyle Pena was kind of uh, guiding him. So we'll see what happens here. Yes. D. See, Bronin's offense can get anything done. 30 seconds into um, the third quarter as Bronin has already gotten themselves down to a more worse score as it is going to be O'Halloran ending this game, it seems. O'Halloran, the whole second uh, half quarterback. And he'll take the snap, hands it off. And that's a great run by Cody Davidson a first down. Good handoff and good blocking to set up the hole. Cody Davidson charges through that hole and hits, the, and hits them right up Cody the middle. Cody Davidson on the carry for Burlington for a first down. Number seven, Cam Rosie finally made the stop. So Ryan O'Halloran trying to do a good job. Uh, first game really at quarterback of his career. And he is going to take the snap. He does, and it's another same type play a run, and it's going to be stuffed for a minimal gain. John Magala trying to lead the box right there, the big man. But unfortunately for him, he gets overpowered by two Melrose um, D linemen. So a minimal gain, Josh, uh, about second seven. Number 36 on the carry picks up about two yards. Number 51, Adam Caffey makes the tackle. Ryan O'Halloran under shotgun again. See if he gets another handoff, he does. And that one's for minimal gain. Same type play for the third straight time. Cody Davidson again on the carry. And Cody Davidson again. Picks up a couple. We have number 72, Michael Sickler on the stop. So Bronton on third and seven. Assisted on the tackle. Oh, hopefully they would be a little bit. They're just trying to get Arnold Halloran into the game a little bit and trying to see what he can do with his arm. 
So we'll see a third and six, excuse me, what happens. It'll be a third down and six at the five. Look at the play. Same type of formation as this first two. And oh, Ryan O'Halloran takes the snap. Hands it off, and it's going to be stuffed for, uh, for a fourth down, and it's going to be bringing on the punting unit for Burlington. Unless they're going to bring in... Davison again on the carry. He might be keeping him out there and trying to try a fourth and five. And Kathy, number 51 on the stop. John, is it? No, excuse me, not John Magata, but Cody Davidson is um, down on the field. Derek Raphael assisted on the tackle, and we have a player down on the field. Burlington taking a knee the fallen player and taking their knee for the fallen teammate Cody Davidson the great run back and he gets uh, off the sideline it's fourth and six from the 47 Here we go, Ryan O'Halloran so weird seeing him under center and they're going to now bring out the punting unit for Cam Wheelock. And so we're seeing him as the no gloves and the form and the bar and like um, the shape. He doesn't say like not the same pads. Looks different when you're uh, and they're immediately kicked. And that's a good kick by uh, Cam Wheelock. Isaiac Seed. Seed again. And Seed's off to the races, makes a move. Seed still going. Unbelievable. Isaac Seed breaking legs on the Burlington to defense. That's one of the best runbacks you're going to see this year. Five touchdowns for Isaac Seed on the night. By far the MVP. He dodged five tackles en route to the end zone. Oh, they're going to negate the touchdown. What a disappointment. That was such a great run back. Nothing taken away from Isaiah C. It is fourth touchdown, still only four touchdowns still, as that one is negated by a penalty. Nonetheless, unbelievable running, unbelievable play. Jukes Cam Wheelock and then proceeds to um, using his high steps to get by. His absolute power and will not to be taken down by anybody. And that was it's something to see this man play. Now we gotta get a penalty, so Jack Sullivan's gonna start. But they thought had a touchdown to start the 20-yard line for um, Melrose's offense. But with a guy with Isaiah Seed in their offensive line, I don't even think the offensive line's needed with a guy like Seed back there. So that's really hard for the Bronton's run game to stop. Let's see if Bronton's defense can get any stops right here. Jack Sullivan on the ca pa passes off, and a Duke, a doozy right there. And a nice little run for about, they're going to consider a third down, excuse me, a second down and one, I believe, or no, they're going to, I thought they were calling the second down one. They're going to move the chains, and it's the first down again on another run play. That's Mike Poitie from the carry. Number 59, Chris Dalton on the stop. That was a first down run. Jack Sullivan. Read option, he takes it himself. What a run. And not ref no one's going down for Melrose tonight. Bruin is yeah, taking so five players at a time on each of them, and they're not going yards. down. We're going to have the quarterback, probably whether if it's the punter, but obviously the punter tonight for Melrose might not ever see the field. Burlington trying to keep the score limited. Very hard to do so against this offense. The flag is down. The play is going to be good for first down and a lot more if it stands. And it takes it to the 40, but it's going to be a penalty, I believe, coming back. There was a flag immediately. It might have been um, a legal contact. Oh, they're going to say offside. Yeah, the flag was immediate. So they're going to decline it, and it's going to be a first down. The Rand stands. Number five, Chris Caraco made the tackle on that last play. Jack Solomon again. Hands it off. Oh, he fumbled! It's recovered by Dylan McKinnon. 
There was a fumble on the play. The ball was recovered by number 72, Dylan McKinnon. The second fumble of the night for Melrose, and Bronin's gonna get a chance on offense if they might do anything with it, not just run quarterback sneaks. I don't know, they might not wanna put Ryan O'Howard in danger, but but hopefully the Devils might get some the touchdown. Team can sit it down on the Burlington party three. A bad snap right there on the, actually it was on the good snap, excuse me, in the read option play, on decision and indecision, and it uh, caused a fumble for Dylan McKinnon right there to scoop it up. So first down for Burlington and Rhino Hound again coming out to take the snaps. And Chris Dalton um, is about to snap it off to him. Three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. And we got a fullback in the game. Rhino Howard takes the snap and he's gonna be a quarterback keeper as he has been, but Melrose understands it. And completely That's devours Rhino Howard. Rhino Howard on the carry. Taken down behind the line of scrimmage by number 88, Derek Duraciel and number 32. Well, you're down by 27 10. points. Why would you not try and throw the ball? It's a night you want to see. The fans want to see some better There's plays. Than us. Two on the play. They want to see player plays for both teams. I would, if you're out there playing seven by Melrose, you might as well start throwing the ball. Try and get some plays and see what you can do in that. Not just try and continuously run the ball on us. And Brown didn't give them a chance to for, uh, throw. This is getting repetitive. Another run play. And it's going to go for almost no gain. It's a disaster for Burlington tonight. Ryan O'Halloran might as well give the kid a chance. Uh, based upon his brothers, he could probably come in there and maybe make some good throws. On the carry. Picks up about two to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and ten. Ryan O'Howan finally going to look to throw. He throws him in deep. Double coverage. And oh, he had it. Ryan Colhane should have come down with it, but he chokes. And he gets the ball. And Bronte's one pass play that we finally wanted. Ryan O'Howan makes a good throw to Ryan Colhane. The Ryan Ryan connection just did not work as Ryan Colhane, two of the defenders, double covered, but they went too far back, and Colhane had it wide open. Unfortunately for him, he um, dropped it at Butterfingers. Which we're going to be looking to get a lot of butterfingers on Halloween this year. Uh, around the neighborhood and beautiful nights in October. And just like tonight, we have a great night, Friday night. Brown is not going for it at all. I don't know if they're getting it up or not. They just keep punting and they're going to give it to Cam Wheelock once again. Cam Wheelock with a max cover protection punt. The snap is a little bit high, but Cam Wheelock good enough. And the kick is very high. Number 11, who, who is Michael Fennell, takes it. And the Red um, Raiders are going to get an opportunity to, to keep on showing their dominance from the 30 uh, yard line of their own. Hopefully, they might throw the ball a little bit, get a little bit more creative rather than just constantly um, running it and forcing the fans to sit through um, plays that aren't the best, considering the fact that it's already 27 0. They have a dear, dear formation. They're really good. Melrose is, but they um, they switched the quarterbacks. Now it's Charlie Stanton in the game. But the running game does not stop. It's just been handoff after handoff after handoff from Charlie Stanton with a good handoff and about a gain of one. So Bronson did a better job right there to stop the run. About four minutes, 30 seconds to go, which has been a pretty slow third quarter. Number 56, Nick Campbell on the stop. Picks up about three yards on the And they're trying to run it. And oh, those are the type of plays that you just can't explain. Pure effort by number 31, Christopher Casolito, with a great run. And it would have been stopped short if. But Bronte unable to get the tackles like they haven't been all night. And he pushes forward for the extra yardage to get the first down. Four minutes to go. Let's go fans want some defense. You see if Charlie Stanton might actually throw the ball. 
Charlie Stanton not going to throw the ball. He's going to hand it off again. And the ball goes to number 40. This time they're just putting it out, not just giving it to um, Isaiah. See, they're giving it to Jack Whitley. Jack Whitley on the carry for a five yard gain. Stopped by number 20, Josh Lee. Josh Lee, our good wrestler for Burlington, not able to stop the run as he has so many times. Charlie Stanton hands it off again. John Magana misses the tackle. And number 31, Christopher Colucido breaks through John Magana's grasp. And he, gets a couple, he, gets a, he gets a couple extra yards. That was number 73, Johnson Magana on the tackle of Fusolito. Oh my god, okay. Here comes um, 12. Charlie Stan hands it off, and that should be good enough for the first down. Jack Whitley again on the carry for a Melrose first down. That was made by, made by number 20, Josh Lee. Bronton, kind of just seem like they're not doing too much in the game right now and not trying their best. Obviously, very depressing season so far. And, they're down already, not even having Kyle Pena, so the offensive game hasn't been doing anything. They're just trying to close the game out with less points down, but Melrose isn't holding back. Another missed tackle. Christopher Cusolito breaks through, but not before he reaches, um, I believe, Dylan McKinnon. Chris Cusolito picks up about three yards, four yards on the carry. Stop is made by number 72, Dylan McKinnon. Gonna bring up a second and seven from the 40. <laughs> Bronton bringing pressure. And it's another run and a flag might be offside on one team and a uh, run is gonna be obviously, as we know tonight, the run is always good. And it's going to be a first down, and I believe they are indicating it on Burlington, so it should be first down. However, there was a flag on the play. It seems like they're giving a first down, even though the flag is up. Oh, they're going to call, um, I don't know. will be penalized for illegal motion. Oh, illegal motion, excuse me. Two men went in motion, and it's going to bring back the play to a third down, or a second down, excuse me. Instead of the first down, it's going to be a second down still. At the 45-yard line of Burlington. Melrose looking for more. One two minute, 20 seconds to go, and Charlie Stan under center again. It's just been run after run after run. Charlie Stan finally going to throw. Pressure brought. Screen pass. That is read beautifully by Burlington. Number seven, Jake McCauley takes some down. Screen pass is complete to number 40, Jack Whitley. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Bronton trailing Melrose at Jack Melrose Red the Raiders Twitter High School by, by 27 Jake points. McCauley. Not scoring a single point, which a lot of people predicted so far. We'll Hopefully Bronton can change that. From the 44. Charlie Stan, another pass, deep. And this one is called in. Unbelievable catch by number 88, Derek Del Rafale. What a great catch and a great throw. The first deep pass connection of the night for Charlie Stan, who just run and run and run. And he finally goes deep. And when they go deep, the first exciting play happens as he, um, Derek DeFarrafri. That's the end of the third quarter. Um, got by his man and went on the inside and got a first down and goal. Great play by the um, by the veteran.
Melrose with a great position here. Unbelievable effort on the first and goal right here. That's going to get that, excuse me. And the deep bomb got inside his man and got the ball for an uh, exciting play. Again, we're entering the fourth quarter of this very nice, beautiful night in Melrose. It's brought to Trails 27-0. So we got Charlie Stanton coming back out, trying to complete a touchdown drive. And we have currently not seen, since he was denied um, a fifth touchdown, we have not seen Isaac Seed in the game. So it's, that's interesting. But we'll see what he, uh, Charlie Stanton can do with his running backs. Probably a run. What did I tell you? Number 31, Chris Costillo gets down to a decent gain and a four yard line. That was Fusolito who get on the carries. <laughs> Taken down by number 20, Josh Lee. Doesn't look like he gained too much on the play. So we got Charlie Stanton again. Bronson gonna bring the blitz. Outside blitz, nowhere close. That's a touchdown, no penalty denied, and it is 33. That's for no one's touchdown. The first touchdown of the game, scored by someone not named Isaiah C, number 31, the man of this uh, drive, really. Christopher Cosolito finishes off the drive that he started. All set up by that huge throw and catch to um, no Derek DiFraffiele, which was great. 33 to nothing with a 34 to nothing. Bronson not able to stop the run again. Four running, five running touchdowns tonight. He missed, the, he's three for four of the night, making him try and go four for five. And his kick is good. That kick is up and good. So commanding 34 nothing lead with 10, 18 to go in Melrose High School. Burlington not doing a lot tonight, but putting up some fight, facing some controversy and adverse um, adversity when they brought when uh, we do not know what happened exactly, but how Pena stopped coming to the game and Ryan O'Halloran came into the game and uh, has been doing things since. So we have to assume that Kyle Pena has been injured. Very black and dark night here, as the skies are very nice, and we got a nice Friday Night Lights game with the cheerleaders and the band and. Very good people around the stands. Tamar Bino will get set to kick. Tamar Bino, his maybe line, sixth or seventh kick of the game. Ryan set deep for Burlington. And again, Ryan O'Halloran, one of the men's deep. He has also um, Ryan Colhane. So the two Ryans are back to receive this. Bono kicks it, and Ryan O'Halloran again, trying to break through for once. He gets try to get gets a box. And he's out to the outside. He's going to be the best field position of the night for Bronin to start. The man who um, is going to play quarterback as well and just gets That's them into a good field position. On a good return, chased out of bounds by number 66, Kamar Bino. And the kicker, the big man, Kamar Bino, came all the way back to tackle out of bounds, Ryan O'Halloran. And now Ryan O'Halloran might as well try and throw the ball a couple times down by 34 and try to show what he can do at quarterback, maybe. You know, he's known for the receiver and the defensive um, quarterback positions. All right, we got O'Halloran again. He's gonna actually pass. O'Halloran, that is a lollipop, and it's intercepted. 21 to 21 connection, not in a good way. It is intercepted by Kevin Petey. Intercepted by number 21, Kevin Petey. 
Kevin Peaty with a good play. Unfortunately for Arnold Allen, that's what you have when you don't play quarterback too much. He gets a good play to get them in field position, but then the first play, not used to quarterback in the throws, and there he lost grip, and it was really a no chance. It floated up in the air way too long, not enough velocity um, or acceleration to get to his receiver, and it's intercepted easily and taken back for a good return. As I said, Melrose up with another good chance of a touchdown. Quarterback in the game, number two, Luis Izzy Jr. Who gave the snap off to, I didn't forget, uh, I'll shoot, I we have a flag that like came after the play. That was number 31, Chris Cusolito on the carry. The flag Cusolito on the, on the carry. And it's on the offense. Call for holding. So it's gonna be a 10 yard penalty and Brolin's gonna get another chance so to get like a, an out which they have not gotten all night. Not one outing have they gotten and not one punt they have forced from Melrose. So as we said, yeah, bro, Melrose kind of to interpret the game might be over 34 nothing lead and 9.43 to go. So, and now, and now they got, uh, now, now they got another one. 16, who is Jesse Gardner? Jesse Gardner hands it off. They're just putting quarterbacks in there for fun. Chris Colito tackled and a little bit extra after the play. Colito again on the carry. And it's only a gain yeah, of after like. After a couple of yards gain. After about four or five yard gain for um, Melrose. And it's going to bring up a second 16. Number 44, Sean McGilvery led the charge for Burlington. Sean McGilvery leads the charge. And now we are. Uh, and now they're going to switch quarterbacks again. They. Not as much, I've never seen them switch court, people switch quarterbacks as much as they have tonight. They're using all strings. And it is um, indeed Louis Izzy Jr. in the game. He takes the snap. He hands it off to Christopher Colusito, who runs around. Bronson might as well tackle him, and they do. And it's going to be a third down and about eight. Good enough tackle to get a third long. Bronson looking for the first punt. Eight minutes and 35 seconds to go here on this beautiful night in Melrose. Or you could also say the concessions are a little bit overpriced. But we'll not really pay $3.50 for a slice of pizza. So I guess that Bronton's winning the price values of pizza better than Melrose, but Bronton's on, unfortunately on the football game scoreboard is losing. Izzy Jr. hands off to Christopher Colucido again. Main running back of this He's second half, the as they have stopped the running um, the big man, the Isaiac Seed, the, the man who was so good earlier, and they have re been running Christopher Cusilito and, and um, just to run the clock out. They'll bring up a fourth and six, and Noah will line up and punch on eight. The first punt of the night. So the Brady kicker, who was sitting down all ice cold all game, Piero finally gets a chance to punt the ball. Melrose's his first punt, and Bronden finally forces a stop. As we, uh, as they did get a stop, but with back of quarterbacks of um, Jesse Gardner and Louis Izzy Jr. in the game. Bonnard takes the snap, a good snap, has all the time in the world, almost blocked, and the kick is good enough to be run back, which it oh tackled by the caller. You could call it a horse caller. Not going to call it, and it's going to be a first down for Burlington at the 25. 7 10 to remaining. Oh, Dan almost got a perfect 7 11 remaining. In this one. So, Ryan O'Howard after his interception last play, he's gonna take the snap and he's gonna run the, they're gonna run the ball this time, but he's stuffed for no gain, and that is, I believe, a little bit extra of a tackle at the end. I believe that was uh, Cody Davidson, if I'm not mistaken. The, uh, 
uh, Cody Davidson, one of our most talented runners, and I believe that was him. It is. But he does have the um, uh, minimal gain of, actually negative gain, excuse me, negative um, one yard, unfortunately. Stop for no gain by number 66, Kamar Bino. Kamar Bino making his contribution tonight on defense as he's been kicking very well tonight for, on the special teams. Ryan O'Halloran takes the snap and he's not going to play action. He's going to hand it off again and for only pretty much no gain. Maybe even lost a little bit of inches. Number 36, Cody Davison on the carry for no gain. Number 55, Jonathan Portier made the stop at the line of scrimmage. All right, third and 11, no, and it's almost coming down to the final minutes here. 5.50 to go in the fourth quarter, almost end of the game. Burlington down 34 nothing to the great Melrose Raiders. So Ryan O'Hara might run, or he might, and he's gonna do a straight up run. It's gonna be um, a penalty, oh! Bournier, I would not be liking to see your one of the main receivers taking hits like that by Bino. And he got a big hit from Bino from behind. Fortunately, he didn't fumble, and we'll see what the penalty flag is. that Burlington is going to get a first down out of all of this. Yes, they are. They're going to move the chains. Burlington, Burlington is going to not get a first down, excuse me. They're going to get a third down and I believe six with the five-yard penalty. So Ryan O'Hallon might want to consider throwing. His shoulder pad is, is messed up now because of that They're tackle. Third down. And he's going to take the snap. He's going to fake it. He's going to run his elusiveness. And he tries to make a move. He does. Beautiful move. And a first down. Great play. Ryan O'Halloran on the carry fights his way for a Burlington first down. Finally driven out of bounds by number 25, Brendan Ma. Ryan O'Halloran. Another fake, the same play, and this time he is going to get more yardage and trucks over a defender to almost get the first down. Ryan on the Similar type play to the last one. Number 27, Mike Calvert on the stop. Ryan O'Halloran, again under center. See if he runs or is he gonna pass. He's gonna hand it off to his big man Davidson. Gets a block and that's gonna come back. It's a first down momentarily, but that's coming number back. Cody Davidson on the carry Ryan O'Halloran knows it's coming back and that's why he has his hands on his hips. He knew immediately. Number 25, Brendan Ma finally makes the stop. It was a flag on the play and it's a holding call against Burlington. Four minutes exactly to go in this fourth quarter. Unfortunately, that's a devastating penalty. It's going to set Bronson up in worse field position than they actually had to start off. It negates the run by Halloran on first down, picking up, and now you got a person to foul call. Excuse me, not the holding, but person to foul is being intended. And now you're forced to run, or yeah, which is almost you're going to get no yardage, or you're going to have to pass and trust O'Halloran. So a very bad play that you had third and second and two, and you wasted that with a penalty. It just has to be more situational aware. Burlington, you see they try to run again. Now they're wrapped up for only about a gain of one. We're going to bring up about third down and ten. With three minutes and 30 seconds to go in the clock winding. Number 36, on Cody Davison on the carry for no gain. Number 
On the 65, that was 65 Dunton on the shot. Oh, they read that all the way. They knew that Ryan O'Hallon was going to take the read option, not hand off to Davis, and he gets trucked over for the easy fourth down Ryan play. Ryan on the carry. Bronson might go for it. They might just bring out Cam Wheelock to punt. Number 82, Dallas Send the game to with two minutes and four seconds remaining and go. They might, and they think they're going to go for it and try and give O'Halloran maybe a pass. Fourth and long for Burlington. Not too much to lose down by 34 with two minutes to go in the game. So might as well try a play that gets you a first down for the young quarterback, sophomore Ryan O'Halloran with no experience until tonight playing for the injured Kyle Pena. O'Halloran takes it. He's got some pressure. And his pass is caught. A patch and a beauty from O'Halloran backing up. This finds him to complete the chains. There again, the Ryan to Ryan connection and the first down with 225 remaining. O'Halloran trying to keep the drive going. He's going to try and pass again. He's got room. He's got space. He's got a receiver. And unfortunately, not on the same page with Alec Rollins, his intended target. He's going to bring up a second down, 10 with 2.16 remaining. O'Halloran's pass is incomplete. It was intended for number 12, Alec Rollins. Allen running up and shotgun with no one left. You can assume that this would be a straight up run to his right with the raw blockers or a pass. Hopefully pass, we'll see what we can do. And it's another run to the right, but looking for the pass, same play. Not a bad attempt and unfortunately, uh, great coverage and not a chance that it was gonna actually be completed, unfortunately. Ryan O'Halloran almost was able to get, almost got a fumble, excuse me. Uh, but unfortunately, he he was able to get it off and almost find his receiver. Well, Allen's pass intended for number 17, Michael Paveo, is incomplete. <laughs> number 25, Brendan Ma knocks the pass down. Michael, and it's another run. He's gonna keep it. He's elusive, and dies to the sticks. First down, minute 58 to go. Out of bounds, a minute 57 to go. Number 15, Brandon Whalen finally runs him out of bounds. That was a good play by Howard, showing some elusiveness, especially on speed to the outside. trying to fill in, trying to make some really um, good contributions, finally passing the ball a little bit. This time it's a run. And a run that's good by Davis in his first big one of the night. Comes with a minute 48 to go and the clock counting down. Bronze trying to get some points on the board that's here, not get shut out by the, the great Melrose it's team who we know is going to be difficult to beat. A good effort tonight, unfortunately for Bronze. Not Monterello able to stop anything in the run game and that dominated them tonight when they took the trip here and um, Looks like they're taking the L. At least we can try and score and get something to boost our confidence for later. O'Halloran, the young man, makes a move. Another good run. O'Halloran, fighting. Touchdown. Number 21, Ryan O'Halloran on the building to carry for a touchdown. The first positive play of the night for Burlington. Other than some other good plays they had, a touchdown with a minute 24 to go in the game. O'Halloran, a bright spot, as he has been using his legs to run around. Again, mostly to his right, great blocking, makes the move. Bronton's not gonna be shut out, and that is a dub. 
will say 34-7 is a lot better than 34-0. Looks like they're going to go for two. They are going for two. And that is going to be Inca. No. He did not get the goal line. And 34 6 is still better than 34 0. Positive attitude. A minute 24 to go. And Bronson can look at this and say, at least they got some points. Can we all kick off again tonight? Burlington looking for some more positives. This can we all kicks the ball off to the corner. And it's all the way down deep. And they're gonna take it out. Burlington's gonna stuff him at the five-yard line with a minute 16 to go. And Woober and excuse me, Melrose might as well just run out the clock unless Bronson wants to try and get the ball back for a little bit of a consolation touchdown for a second one. I would think that Rollinson would just let the clock run out and we uh and we would um see the game in. After all these four string, the four different quarterbacks, obviously Charlie Stanton, the main one, Jack Solomon, the second one, and then we got the last two ones. Uh, and I believe right now in the game, we're going to see the one who led them to another touchdown, Louis Izzy Jr., to close out the last minute, 15 seconds. Izzy Jr. takes the snap. Takes a knee, and I for a second thought that he might have taken a knee into the end zone for a touch uh, for a safety, but Bronson not really trying too much to try and stop that. So Bronson like kind of just lean in a little bit, not uh, get a safety as they did right there. Forty-four seconds and. This is going to be the last kneel down of the match. Bronton not sending anyone forward. They're going to just take the knee. And that's going to end the game. Bronton takes the L. And Melrose Red Raiders take the dub. They improved the 7 0 in the season. Bronton. Unfortunately, 0-7 on the season under Dan McKay's first year. Disappointment as Bronson not expect to do too much this game and unfortunately couldn't pull off an amazing upset as we are going to, from BCAT. Bronson's going to need to improve a lot more and hopefully get some more wins and hopefully get a win this season. And also improve a lot for next year as we, uh, I'm Nick Bongiorno, our cameraman Josh Coughlin. Thank you for watching BCAT Sports. We'll see you um, next week.